Enzo Cicotti is a thief based on Tor Bella Monica, Rome. At the beginning of the movie, he is seen running away from the police after stealing an expensive watch. He tries hiding in an abandoned crane by the side of the river Tiber, but the policemen find him. He immediately jumps into the river as the last resort to not get caught. While trying to get back on the crane, he climbs on a barrel underwater. However, to Enzo's misfortune, the barrel breaks and he is blasted with the radioactive waste inside of it. He somehow pulls himself up and runs back home, unknown of the dangers he has just been exposed to. On the bus ride back home, he frequently coughs out a black substance and can hardly lift up his head. He doesn't get any better at night, vomiting a mysterious liquid and coughing uncontrollably. The next morning, when he wakes up, he feels a lot better. After doing his morning routine, Enzo goes to his next-door neighbor and gang member, Sergio, to sell the watch. Sergio works for a gangster named Fabio, popularly known as the Gypsy. They discuss the plan to retrieve the drugs from a pair of drug mule brothers. As they talk, a guy hands Fabio a new phone that is a different color from what he wanted. The gangster beats the man to death because of the little mistake. His associates, who are used to his psychotic behavior, simply ask for the dead body to be removed. Outside, Sergio meets Enzo and buys the stolen watch for a hundred euros. Enzo is about to leave after the deal, but Sergio has different plans. He wants Enzo to join him on a trip to retrieve the drugs. Although the job is risky, Enzo agrees to do it for money. Following the encounter, they go to Sergio's house to collect the things they need for the deal. Enzo meets Sergio's daughter, Alessia, for the first time and is confused by her behavior. She has drawn several childish drawings and pasted them around the house. She also tells Enzo about the Steel Jig anime and seems to actually believe that one day the character Jig will come to save her. After they leave, Sergio apologizes for his daughter's behavior, revealing that she is psychotically damaged and is obsessed with the Steel Jig anime. She has always been a special child, but after her mother's death, she has shut herself off from reality. The two pick up the drug mule brothers outside an airport and drive them to an in-construction building. The job is simple. Take the packets of drugs outside of the brothers' bodies. However, one of them dies of an overdose when a packet bursts inside his stomach. The living brother is furious at Sergio for refusing to take them to the hospital earlier. Sergio, on the other hand, simply mentions that they will have to cut the dead body to get the substance out. The living brother snatches the gun from Sergio and shoots him several times. Before dying, Sergio bangs the man's head on the wall and knocks him out as well. With his last breath, the guy shoots Enzo, making him fall off the 10th floor, directly into the concrete ground below. By logic, he shouldn't be alive after the fall, but Enzo somehow opens his eyes and gets up, groaning because of the pain. Confused and traumatized by what he just witnessed, he starts running. Somewhere else, Fabio and his men are at a club with Nunzia Lo Cosimo. She is a terrorist and the leader of the Caroma clan, one of the biggest drug dealers in Rome. Fabio was supposed to sell the drugs that Sergio brings to Nunzia, but now that both Sergio and the drug mule are dead, he struggles to provide her with an answer. For the time being, he tells her that the deal went great, knowing well enough that if she finds out the truth, he will be dead. In the meantime, Enzo returns home and is stopped by Alessia on his way. She asks him about her father, but he ignores her. Still, she doesn't stop banging on his door. A frustrated Enzo punches the door and creates a hole in it. Taken aback by his own strength, he tries moving the furniture around and is surprised when he does it with no effort. Later that night, he steals an entire ATM using his newfound strength to break it. On returning home, he uses the money to buy food. In addition to superhuman strength, he seems to have gotten the power to heal in an instant. The gunshot wound that was on his shoulder some hours ago has completely disappeared. Downstairs, Fabio and his men come looking for Sergio and threaten Alessia to reveal his whereabouts. It turns out that they didn't know the location where the deal was going to take place. 
Hence, they believe that Sergio has fled with the drugs and are determined to find him. Fabio puts a butcher knife to her throat and asks her where her father is. Not knowing what is going on, Alessia stays quiet, which angers him even more. All of a sudden, Enzo breaks in through the window with a mask and a hoodie to hide his identity. He easily picks up one of Fabio's minions and slams him onto a table. The others try to fight him, but are easily defeated against his superhuman powers. Realizing that they cannot win, Fabio and his people run away. Before leaving, however, Fabio manages to attack Enzo on his feet, chopping his toe off. Enzo and Alessia go to his house so she can be safe. He tapes his toe back to his foot, hoping it will be attached by the morning. Alessia thinks that he is the superhero Jig from her favorite anime. She believes he has come to save her at last. Because she is mentally ill, Enzo doesn't bother to correct her and goes along with the story. The next morning, he sees that his toe didn't magically attach to his body. He accepts the fact and asks Alessia if she has any relatives with whom she can stay. Enzo doesn't want her to be his responsibility, but Alessia claims that her only relative is her father. With nowhere to take her, he brings her to a residential care home, where she previously stayed while her father was imprisoned. She is reluctant to let Enzo go, but he falsely assures her that he will be back soon. In the meantime, the CCTV camera footage of Enzo stealing the ATM goes viral on the internet. Fabio sees it and realizes that the guy is the same man who they fought in Sergio's apartment. The gang is tense because they are yet to find the drugs. Fabio's right-hand man, Antonio, suggests they take a loan to pay Nunzia for the deal. However, Fabio is not fond of the idea. Instead, he suggests they rob an armored truck that they had planned to rob after the deal. On returning home, Enzo finds a bunch of papers among Sergio's belongings. The papers have an elaborate plan of robbing the same armored truck. The following day, Fabio and his minions are hiding by the side of the highway, armed with guns, ready to rob the truck. However, Enzo stops the truck and steals everything before them. Fabio fires several rounds at him, but Enzo manages to get away before they stop him. Back at home, policemen knock at Enzo's door. It turns out that they found Alessia wandering alone in the streets looking for him. Enzo takes her in and scolds her for bringing the police to his house. The girl innocently complains that he didn't come to meet her. They watch her favorite anime together at night. While they're at it, Enzo tries getting closer to her. Alessia freaks out and asks him to stop because she doesn't want to get hurt. When he calms her down, she reveals that she was sexually abused in the past. The following day, she insists he take her to save her father since he is a superhero. Enzo brings her to a closed amusement park. He uses his strength to move a Ferris wheel so Alessia can ride it. Somewhere else, Fabio and Antonio get into an argument because Antonio wants to take a loan to end the troubles with Nunzia, but Fabio refuses to do so. When Antonio doesn't back up, Fabio orders his Rottweilers to attack him. The gangster is killed in the encounter. Meanwhile, Alessia and Enzo go to a shopping mall to shop for a princess dress that she has always wanted. They end up kissing and making love in the trial room. Afterward, Enzo tells her the truth about her father. Alessia gets upset and blames Enzo for letting her father die. The news about the armored robbery makes it to the TV, and Enzo begins to be known as the super criminal. Jealous of his popularity, Fabio makes it his mission to attain superhuman strength like Enzo. Alessia tries to run away from Enzo and boards a tram. But he stops the tram from driving away with his powers and apologizes to Alessia. She agrees to go with him, but asks him to wear his mask the next time. When Enzo looks around, he realizes that people are filming him and have probably seen him stopping the vehicle. He quickly runs away with Alessia. Meanwhile, with no way out, Fabio meets one of his dealer friends to ask for a loan to pay Nunzia. They are suddenly attacked by Nunzia and her henchmen, who are furious at him for not paying the money on time. 
A shootout ensues between the two parties, and the only people left alive at the end are Nuncia and Fabio. Fabio returns to his office and sees that Nuncia's people have already killed all of his minions. Then, the news about the supercriminal being found is shown on TV. Fabio recognizes Enzo and sets out to ask him for his secret. In the meantime, Enzo and Alessia have decided to run away to a different city now that the police know what he looks like. They stay at a hotel for the night where Enzo tells Alessia about his childhood and how all his friends were killed during a robbery. All of a sudden, Fabio barges in and hits him with a tranquilizer gun. When Enzo wakes up, he is tied to a bed with duct tape. Fabio threatens him with Alessia's life to reveal the secret of his strength. Enzo takes him to the bank of the river and asks him to jump in. Fabio is skeptical and thinks that Enzo is trying to drown him so he could get free. Just then, Nunzia and her people arrive there and start firing at him. In the shootout, both Fabio and Alessia are shot dead. To take proper revenge, Nunzia burns Fabio alive and pushes him into the river. With her last breath, Alessia asks Enzo to help people with his power. He holds her close, mourning the death. The following morning, Fabio emerges from the water, well and alive. It turns out that the radioactive substance has worked on him and he too has gained super strength. He goes to Nuncia's place and takes his revenge by killing everyone there. He also shoots a video of himself killing everyone, hoping to grow as famous as Enzo. Then he finds several explosives hidden in the house. It is clear that Nuncia was planning to bomb the city. Meanwhile, Enzo is wandering alone, disheartened by Alessia's death. A woman and her daughter get into a car accident near him. He uses his powers to save the little girl from a burning car. The mother hugs him in gratitude, which reminds him of Alessia and her last words to him. Moments later, he sees a video on television where Fabio threatens to bomb the Stadio Olimpico. After gaining the powers, he wants to terrorize everyone just because he can. Enzo quickly sets out to look for him. He enters the stadium full of a crowd enjoying the game. On searching, he finds Fabio in the parking lot with the remote of the explosives in his hands. They struggle for a while, after which Fabio runs inside the stadium and gets lost in between the crowd. Moments later, the chase continues outside again. Enzo finally finds the explosive in an ambulance. Unable to defuse it, he takes it with him and runs to the Musica Armando Trovajoli bridge over the river Tiber. Fabio finds him and keeps him from throwing the explosive into the river. In the last showdown, the two fight to get a hold of the bomb with only a minute left for it to explode. In the last second, Enzo grabs it and jumps into the river along with Fabio. The ensuing explosion kills Fabio as his decapitated head lands on the bridge. Enzo is also assumed to be dead and is declared a hero by the media and the people. In the last scene, we see him watch over Rome from the Colosseum. He puts on a jig mask that Alessia knitted for him long ago. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.